we're doing episodes, we, we've set a new club record. A club record that really we can't afford to set, and a club record that a club of our level should not be setting at all. It's ridiculous, but we've uh, we bought a player, technically, for £5,000. Technically, it was a free transfer. We just had to pay compensation for him, and it was £5,000 compensation. So that is a new Lincoln United record for the highest ever transfer fee, £5,000. And if you look at our, uh, our bank balance right now, we can't afford that. £44,000 in the red, we can't afford that. Projection has gone even worse, £182,000 in the red. We can't afford to be spending £5,000 on a player, but he is quite good. He, I say quite good, he's very, very good. So this is Lee Masters, the 17-year-old centre midfielder coming in from Greasley for £5,000 compensation. Potentially more as well, I think. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. But four and a half star current ability, five star potential at 17 years old. He is a star player that we need. We needed someone in the midfield to sort of be the beating heartbeat, come in, try and change things for us. And um, this could be the guy, Lee Masters, a ball-winning midfielder as well. I'm excited about that. I do love a good ball-winning midfielder. Also, Paired with a with box to box or Carolero, that's my sort of dream. I love that midfield, so I'm glad to bring him in. He looks quite funny as well, so I quite like that as well. He's played for Greasley the past three seasons, playing quite well in those in those seasons. Uh, Greasley in, in, in the league below us actually as well, which is interesting. So why he was playing there, I don't know. Why no one else has snapped him up, I don't know. But five thousand pounds is a lot of money, but he, he's a lot of player at a young age. He's very good, so hopefully he can be a fantastic player for us for the next good few seasons. Hopefully. I was also a few clauses as well, but I don't think... Well, this one's my favourite. <laughs> it's amazing. Greasley will be due £0 per game for the next 40 league appearances. That's that's a nice one, isn't it? Greasley also get £1.5,000 when he makes his international appearance for England. So that, that's probably going to come very, very soon, to be fair. That's a decent clause to put on there. They've really done us there, Greasley, with that clause. Uh, they've also done us that clause as well. And a 15% profit on the next transfer as well. So that's not too bad. If we sell him for profit as well, that'd be quite decent as well. So... I mean, it's a win-win situation. We've got a great midfielder. The clauses on are absolutely ridiculous. And if we sell them for profit, which hopefully we might do one day, we need to become a selling club at some point. But who wants to buy players at this level apart apart from me? Let's not be... Apart from me, who wants to buy players at this level? No one. So we may not ever make profit on him. But if we do... I think we could make a nice bit of profit on him. Anyway, that's what I want to start the episode with. The new transfer. He's going to be a great player. He's going to be playing today in the Farsley Celtic game in the FA Cup. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. I hope you're doing well. Since we were last year, only one game has been played. We played Witten Albion in the Integro Dudeson League Cup first round and we won it 2-0, which is frustrating because they're in our league and they're near the top of our league. So why we can win that game 2-0, keep our first clean sheet of the season and we can't do that in the league is quite frustrating, especially as well... This team, I don't know if you can see it behind my head. Let me move out of the way. I'm talking behind the microphone now, so you might not even be able to hear me. But this lineup is is pretty rotated, to be fair. There's quite a, you know, a lot of names there that haven't played a lot of games this season. So that's that's frustrated me quite a lot. So hopefully we can win today's game against Farsley Celtic. Get a, if we actually if we win this, I think we get four and a half thousand pounds in prize money. So that pays for the new player if we do that. So this episode today could be a great episode if we win it. I am fully aware that I said that last episode as well, and I'm fully aware that we lost both games last episode. So, let's get into it then. This is the lineup for today's game. Back to the, well, the team I think is strongest. I mean, we obviously won last game with a very weak side, so perhaps it's not the strongest. But, Emery starts in goal as per usual with Ozima, Jacqueline, Narty, and Walker as that back line. New guy, Masters, Lee Masters, comes in as that ball winning midfielder alongside McQuaid, with Luke Holmes playing on the left hand side of the pitch today, Matt Cotton in the middle, Shanks on the right, and Connor Robinson up front. So, that's the team that I think will take on Farsley Celtic and win. Right then, kickoff is upon us, and if you remember from last episode, we looked at Farsley and they've not won a game yet this season. They've not won a game yet this season, which for us is pretty good. You know, that means that they're in bad form as McQuaid's free kick just over the bar, unfortunately. Obviously, they're not in very good form. That puts us in good stead. Hopefully, they'll slip up today. Hopefully, that their bad form will continue. We'll get the win today. We'll get some good motivation as well because we've beaten a team from a high division and we'll go home happy. That's also why we've gone for this quite attacking formation today. I think it was warranted. If Farsley haven't won a game this season, we need to go out there and attack, attack, attack. That's the way we're going to win this game. So that's why we've gone for it. I'm also looking forward to seeing how Masters plays today. Like, I am excited. He looks like a cracking player at 17 years old as well. Like, head and shoulders better than every player that we've got in the squad at the moment. So hopefully he is going to be the start. Hopefully he's going to ignite the new 
revolution of players that will happen next season probably because all the good ones are currently on loan at other clubs so like we said last episode we're building for next season but this guy just happens to be available didn't happen to be available now he was on a youth contract still at Greasley and we could approach to sign him if we wanted to and we did it and we paid money technically which isn't great but we need him we need a good player at midfield and this is him I'm really trying hard to justify that £5,000 like I why did I do it because that's £5,000 we don't have but I'm, I'm just trying to justify it to you guys hopefully you'll forgive me i mean he's already proving to be a good signing because we've kept a clean sheet in this first half i think that is potentially not not actually the first time we, we did that in the in the whitby game the first game of the season but one of the first times this season that we've actually kept a clean sheet in the first half so that's what five thousand pounds gets you a clean sheet in the first half it might also keep us a clean sheet in the second half at this rate to be fair nothing has happened so far in fact there's been no highlights in this game at all has he apart from that free kick early on so Maybe something needs... I mean, Masters has actually been the worst player on the pitch, if you look at this, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, he's meant to be the revolution, but he's currently the worst player on the pitch in terms of performance. What we're going to do then is take Shanks off, move Cotton across again, like we did last episode, bring Mum on in that attacking midfield position, see if that makes a change. I, I do like Mum. Like, we've neglected Mum this season. I do apologise, Mum. We've just grown up a little bit and we've we've moved out of the house. We've moved on. We've neglected a little bit. Now we feel a bit bad about it. So we're going to try and, and you know, get you back on our side sort of thing. So mum comes back into the fray and I'm tempted to bring Skeffington on for Masters, but we'll leave it for now. Just for now, I think. I mean, this really is getting irritating right now. Let's go attacking. Ten minutes to go. Uh, I didn't even do it because of the highlight now. And it looks like it's going towards Farsley Celtic. If they score with the only highlight of the game... That would frustrate me so much. They are coming forward, though, with the ball. We've been the better side here today as well. We look at the stats as well. So if they score now, I'll be very upset. It goes all the way through to Hussein. Tackled by Jake Walker. That's fantastic. Jake Walker up. Not the best of balls. That ball forward to Smith was very good. Narty clears. And we've retained possession. Now, Cotton on the ball. Let's keep it calm, boys. Keep it calm. Keep coming forward. Cotton coming forward with the ball into Connor Robinson. Robinson into Mum. Mum, that was a, a little bit nervous there. Into Holmes. Luke Holmes on the ball, back to McQuaid. We're building nicely. What a shot. I thought that was going for the top corner. It wasn't to be. Let's say get creative as well on these final 10 minutes. I mean, a replay wouldn't be too bad because it means more money for us. But I, I'm not particularly keen on a replay. Masters on a 6.1 now. McQuaid, come on. Oh, I literally thought that was going in the back of a net. That's been so many. The three highlights, to be fair, should have been goals. And I say that because I, I feel guilty that we've not won today. Or I feel bad that we've not won Looks like it could be going towards extra uh, a replay, rather. Although Narty collects the ball at the back, plays it up to Luke Combs. If we can get one now, that would be huge. Masters on the ball, who's been rubbish all game, apparently. Makes a successful pass, so that should bring his rating up just a little bit. Out to Osmia, or whatever he's called, in towards Mum. Mum puts it in the back of a net. Get in there. 89th minute. Looks like we have won this FA Cup tie. I thought we might. I was really, like, honestly... When I saw a draw and saw how poorly they played, I really thought we would win this game. Perhaps not comfortably, but I thought we'd win it. We might not win it yet. We've not won it yet. We've we've actually not won it. <sighs> Two episodes in a row now, that's happened. Two episodes in a row, that's happened now. And now we've got a replay with Farsley Celtic. <sighs> okay, then. Okay. That's really annoying. That is really, really annoying. Um... We've got a replay at least. That's a little bit more ticket money and things. So that might recoup some of the transfer money that we spent. Um, 500, we've got made £2,000 off that then. Because we were 44, now we're 42. So £2,000 off those 500 tickets sold for that game. So that's not too bad to be fair. That's pretty good going. Hopefully the replay will be better. Hopefully we'll win it. Not sure when it's going to be though. Uh, actually, it's in four days time apparently. So, uh, okay. T tell you what then. We'll do it. I mean, we've got no choice. Unless you only want one game this episode, we're doing the Farsley Celtic game. So there we go. In the meantime, we offered Gary Jones out on loan to some clubs because he's not going to play this season. And I want him to get game time. So we've offered him out to some clubs uh, and they all seem to want to pay him uh, first team regular as well rather than key player. Okay, well, we want to offer him to the best clubs in the highest division. Northern, and this is where it's confusing. Northern Division 1, is that... Now, what... I don't understand what tier this is. If we click on a club, Shildon, then, and we look at their overview, they're in the, the counties leagues, essentially, then. Okay, that's all right. The Eastern Counties Premier must be Counties League. 
Northern Division 1, Counties, Counties, Spartan, South Midlands, Beagles, Wade. In the, okay, so they're all sort of at the same level, I think. So what we'll do then is, where's the like accept all button? There doesn't seem to be an accept all button, unfortunately. Or is there in the in this screen? If we go here, Gary, just accept them all. He can choose where he wants to go then. I don't mind too much because he'll get good game time, I think. So that's quite good. Saying that, I probably should actually have... A, <laughs> I probably should have looked to see where they are on the table and accepted the teams that are like top of the table, things like that. But oh well, not to worry too much. We've got the farthest Celtic game to worry about in four days' time again. This is this is literally, what do we call it? Deja vu. That's what I'm looking for. Deja vu. In the meantime, though, we have got the third qualifying round draw today. So does that make it any smaller? It's still a lot of teams. 95 left for draw. So we'll just draw all teams again. Uh, draw all teams, not, not automatic teams. Uh, potentially playing St. Neots away from home in the next round if we beat Farsley. Who are actually, are they, they must be like an equivalent league to us. Yeah, they're like the equivalent league to us at our level. So that could be a decent game as well. St. Neots, how have they played so far this season? Uh, better than us, that's what I'll say. Better than us. And they beat Kids Grove 4-1, who we only just about beat. So that could be a tough game, to be fair. That comes pretty soon, actually, that game as well. So if we win this game against Farsley, we'll have to discuss what goes on next episode. But uh, we've got to get there first. So we need to focus on this game. Right, so I won't lie to you. We played quite well last game. So I want to try and keep pretty much the same team out there. What we will change, though, we'll bring Chris Kelly on for Luke Holmes, just because I want to give... He looks a little bit tired. I want to give him a bit of a rest. And maybe Chris Kelly as a winger might do it just a little bit better, perhaps. Um, I mean, everyone else looks relatively fit. Masters is looking a little bit tired. Now, he played awfully last game, but is technically the best player in the squad. So I kind of don't want to get rid of him, but we'll probably sub him f halfway through the game. I think that's what we'll do. Other than that, let's try and keep that team together then, because it worked quite well last game. I think if we do it again, we'll do better this time and win it. So there's the one change. Chris Kelly comes in. Let's try and beat Farsley Celtic. Come on, boys. Right, then kickoff is upon us. And today we've got the home crowd advantage. I don't know how much advantage it gives us at this kind of level, really. Uh, I don't think we'll get more than 200 fans. So I don't think it'll make a massive difference. But you never know. You never know with these things. I think if we play like we did last game, we'll be fine to go through. If we play like we did last game, it'll be absolutely fine. I mean, 20 minutes into the game, nothing's happened yet, which is slightly worrying but then again nothing happened last game either and we nearly won that one nearly i mean don't speak too soon i'm not going to say if we go one up in this game i'm not going to say anything because i don't want to jinx it again this would be huge for us though if we win this game the next game against uh who is it st neots like that's winnable like that uh, at our level rather than the level above us or another level above us so it's a winnable game that one I think this could be a great chance for us to get a bit of prize money. I think that really is a winnable game. I'm not sure if we'll show it next episode because I want to try and get on with the series a little bit. Um, I feel like we spent too long in series one and two or season one and two rather. So I do want to get on with it a little bit. We probably won't do the St. Nitz game next episode. Um, it's a great chance for us to win it, but looking at their form, I don't think we will. And considering they beat Kids Grove 4-1 and we lost, or we, no, we beat Kids Grove, but we only just beat them really. I don't think it's going to be that... I, I don't think we'll win it either way. So I'm not going to show it next episode, I don't think. I'm talking as if we've already won the game as well, by the way. I'm talking as if we've already won this tie. Uh, we haven't already won it. We're still drawing and there's not been a single highlight in the game yet. So that needs to change. Assertively, it's time to dig deep and give everything you've got. Uh, McQuaid and, and Connor Robinson looking motivated by that. Which is... I mean, it's okay. I'd rather... I'd rather see the whole team motivated, but at least Connor Robinson, who's our key player up front, seems motivated. So hopefully he'll grab himself a goal in this game. Nothing's really happening, though, <laughs> again. And uh, again, worst player in our team looks to be Masters. So I think we'll take him and Jack... Maybe not Jacqueline. We'll take Shanks off, though. Uh, not Shanks, Masters off. Because he's looking tired and not playing particularly well. So Skeffington's going to come on for him. Uh, we're going to make Skeffington, though, that centre midfielder on support. Actually, no, let's make him on attack. Let's try and get an extra body forward. Put him on attack. That should be quite good. Uh, Robinson's not played massively well. So we're going to bring Hutchinson on as well, I think, up front as a, uh, a poacher. That's what we want to be, a poacher up front. That might help us out a little bit as well. There are two changes that we'll make at the moment then. Those two changes could have a big effect on the game, uh, positively or negatively. But right now... We've had seven shots on target to their one. Like, we are digging in deep. We need to get this win. Let's go on attacking as well. Let's also say get creative out there because we need to, basically. Get creative out there, boys. 
we need to conjure something up in these final 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's extra time, then penalties. They've got a free kick, which I thought was going right in the back of the net. That was the first highlight of the game, by the way, that one. So this literally, I think there's been four highlights in this episode. Four highlights in two games in this episode so far, which is appalling. Less than 10 minutes left now. Less than 10 minutes left. Matt Cotton is looking tired out there. Mum, get yourself on the pitch. You've got 10 minutes to make an impact, Mum. Come on, get yourself out there. You could be the game changer. Push forward out there. Five minutes to go. We really should have, looking at the stats, we really should have scored a goal in this game. Looking at those amounts of shots on target and things like that. We've not had a shot for ages though, unfortunately. And as the clock ticks down, they've got a free kick, which terrifies me. Right at the death, because we saw what happened last game. The, the, no. No, I am not accepting that. That is ridiculous. I'm smiling because it's just ridiculous that this happens to us so many times. We've, got, we've, we've lost it. We've lost it. We really... It's all over. We, we, should, we, we literally, we should have won that. We should have won that in the previous bloody game. But twice, not once, twice they score in the 91st minute. Twice. Oh, this is that. This is the story of our football manager career. Aggressive, far from pleased with that result. Ah, oh, we really. You hate football manager. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. But this kind of thing happens. It's happened to us twice in one episode. Twice in one episode. To be fair, good attendance actually. We, we, We've probably made the money back. You know, the prize money we would have got, we probably got in in, in, in attendance fees instead. So it's not all... To, I mean, we're, we're, we're worse off than we were before. £45,000. That's That was worse than we started off on. So actually, it's not made much of an impact at all. That was so frustrating. So frustrating because we really should have won that tie. We should have won it in the first bloody leg, let alone the replay. We would have had a great chance, I think, as well against St. Neots to, to get more prize money and to get to get more ticket money. And then we'd be one win away from the actual first round of the FA Cup. So, I mean, we'll have to go again next season, obviously. That's the way to do it. Go again next season. Of course, we can't do it this season now. We've got to go again next season. But that's... Oh, we should have won that. Okay, well, next episode then. Um, we won't do Gainsborough and Boston. I want to do them, but they are further down the table here. In, in February and March, Gainsborough and, and Boston. So we'll do those two later on. I do want to do them because of the local derbies. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to go for Droylston and Stafford Rangers in the next episode. Uh, Droylston 14th, Stafford Rangers 13th at the moment. So potentially winnable games those ones so we'll see what happens but make sure you join with that next time because it's going to be a cracking episode again so a lot of absolutely ridiculous stuff happened in today's episode if you've enjoyed it make sure you do drop a like on the video for me it's been it's an entertaining one to say the least it is an entertaining one just unfortunate that it's ended like this so um we'll go again next season in the fa cup we will do something in the fa cup like the goal is to reach the 